25,000 feet in the air, silently lurking in the clouds, aloft 24 hours without rest, a half-ton predator hunts. Force's predator system, its unmanned reconnaissance and strike plane, hunts enemies covertly from the sky, attacks on commands received by satellite, collects reconnaissance for ground troops through remote sensing, and removes enemy leadership with precise geographic target information. All this with revolutionary advances in geospatial technology and a $3.8 million price tag. My name is Captain Catherine Platt, and I'm a predator sensor operator. A Predator system is comprised of four aircraft, one Predator primary satellite link, the PPSL. This is our primary link, of course, to the satellite. KU band SATCOM. The ground control station basically looks like the back of a semi bed. No windows, a pilot and a sensor operator, pilot on the left, sensor operator on the right, and they fly the aircraft from here. My name is Major Clayton Marshall. Uh, I'm an instructor pilot here in the Predator. I've been flying the aircraft for about two years now. And uh, prior to this, I used to fly F-16s. There are lots of Predators flying over uh, Fallujah during the battle last fall, in which case we were providing eyes uh, from the sky for the troops on the ground, keeping them aware of threats that may be sneaking up behind them, that sort of thing. We can fly the Predator via a primary Predator satellite link, PPSL, and it looks like a bird dish, and it's the satellite that controls the aircraft. It takes the information from the ground control station, sends it up through the PPSL to a satellite that then translates the command to the aircraft. There's a dish in the aircraft that receives that command. That's the process that takes about two seconds. You just have to get used to the feel and anticipate that delay. Uh, and if you get really good doing that, then it's, it's seamless and, and you can really operate the camera effectively. And when you think of the fact that this information is traveling thousands and thousands of miles, two seconds is, is really nothing. Uh, there's a little disassociation, but once you get inside the trailer, you know, you're pretty much immersed in the world over there uh, for a couple hours at a time at least. And then when you step out, you go back home to your family and... Uh, live like anyone else. We have basically what is a snowmobile motor that runs on a base gasoline, but we have incredible endurance. We can stay up for uh, 20 hours plus. We are now flying five to eight hour shifts because of the demand for Predator and the lack of pilots and sensor operators. Sensor operators responsible for the target prosecution, and they're responsible for operating the payload on, on the Predator. The multispectral targeting sensor, or MTS ball, is our primary payload on the Predator. We have the ability to use an IR camera, infrared camera, day TV camera, which is Neo camera, and get full motion video from that. So it's just like you got a, your own video camera and you're staring at the ground. We also have a laser range designator, and we use that to guide in laser-guided bombs. And uh, we have a laser target marker. It's basically an IR strobe that we can point at a target. So someone on night vision goggles, another aircraft, or a pilot on night vision goggles can see that target. So we have a lot of different options. This is a look at the AGM-114 Hellfire missile. It's about a 100-pound missile, so it's not very heavy, but it's good enough if we see a truck or an HVT, a high-value target that we need to prosecute immediately, that we would be able to at least scare them a lot. It's a precision asset, and it's very, very accurate. This is our Predator operation cell, and from here we are able to view the feed from the Predator that's currently airborne. 
So the feed pumps into here, and we inside here are comprised of intelligence analysts, weather, and we provide information to the crews to build situational awareness for their missions, but we are also able to analyze the targets that they're seeing, do some sort of intelligence analysis real time. I can tell that he's in his infrared camera and white hot, which means anything that's hot is showing white versus showing black. This is all of our aircraft positional information, so I know, again, exactly where the aircraft is in space, and that's based on an INS in the aircraft, which is a navigation system, and then GPS. So we have GPS satellites as well that allow us to navigate. You have coordinates, the target position coordinates, the bearing of the target, the range to the target. He is locked up on a tank right now. I can tell he's got these four little squares, meaning that he has a track established, and establishing a track allows us to just stabilize the ball on that one target. And at this point, I could ask him to zoom in to try to see if he can ID it. If this were a Hellfire run, he would place his crosshairs over the target and squeeze the laser, and the Hellfire will hit where his crosshairs are. A typical day would be you come in for your briefing, you get your briefing from intelligence, figure out what your mission is going to be, and then you go inside the ground control station, and you're usually going to be in the ground control station for about three to four hours on your mission. Well, the biggest noticeable difference is your lack of sensory input. So flying a Predator versus other aircraft, you don't hear the engine, you don't feel the aircraft move, you don't feel the buffeting from the wind or the turbulence. You don't feel when the aircraft rolls into a turn or climbs or descends. This is the uh, nose camera on the aircraft, which is uh, at the very front, and it's, uh, it's always uh, focused straight ahead. Uh, it will give uh, it's the normal uh, pilot's uh, camera to have up during takeoff and landings. This is the IR sensor, and basically it takes the heat sources on the ground and puts them in the pitch of the camera camera stand. Currently we're looking at white hot, so all the white objects on the screen are hot, which is kind of fuzzy because it's like eight miles away. And we also have a day TV camera, which is basically like a normal camera. You have a targeting box up here, and I can I can select targeting mode and click anywhere in this map, and it'll put the sensor where that targeting box goes. So say I want to look at North Las Vegas, I can just click the targeting mode up there, and it put me right in Las Vegas. Say you knew where the stratosphere was located. By, ge by geographic coordinates, you can put them into this box up here, and it would point directly to where the stratosphere is. The resources you have available to you are uh, so much better. Uh, I can go on the internet right here. I can bring up uh, the latest weather satellite picture, uh, things you never dreamed of being able to do uh, in an aircraft. Uh, you know, Ten years ago or so, pretty much pilots in their airplanes were flying around. They just had a map in their hand, had their course basically plot it on the map, just old pencil and ink, uh, to figure out where they're going to go. These days in the Predator, you've got a map on the screen there that shows your position, and any, on that map you can zoom in and zoom out to any level of detail you want, including satellite imagery. And in addition, you put your cursor on the map, and anywhere you put it, the digital train elevation data tells you the elevation of the train around there, which is actually very handy when you're trying to pick out a target on the ground. I'd say the thing I enjoy most about the job uh, is knowing what's going to be in the paper the next day and when I read about knowing that I was involved. When we do the operational missions, getting to actually help somebody on the ground with all the resources and technology that we have, uh, it's very exciting to be a part of. And, uh, uh, I guess the most rewarding is uh, when I was able to assist with actually employing Hellfire weapons watching the forces and you can see them and you can see details and you can break out people and you can tell a Humvee from a regular truck so you know it's our guys and you do definitely get the sense that you are sort of a guardian angel you're like an eye in the sky for them you're sort of their third eye if you will and uh, that's a really good feeling because I really I think most of us really respect what they do on the ground and the ability to directly support them is we consider it a privilege. The military's high demand for the Predator has paved the way for further development in remotely piloted aircraft. 
The next generation Predator MQ-9 will be four and a half times heavier, twice as fast, and with a more robust payload than the original version. Predator's ability to capture real-time aerial imagery has revolutionized warfare and will continue to inform military planners and protect troops into the future.